So this is our weekly platform meeting, and I just realized we, I probably did, I know I did not, I don't know if anyone else did, post in the contributor forum that we moved this from yesterday to today. Um, I forgot to do that. Oh. So. Um, okay, so we probably don't need to wait for anyone. So I am apologizing after the fact now on video that uh, uh, for, we forgot to do this. Um, there was a conflict yesterday, so that's why we moved it today. So let's look at the Etherpad. Uh, we're going to skip the first item for a minute in case Matt can join us to talk about it because it was his idea to add it to the Etherpad in the first place. Um, so new topic and subtopic pages are live behind a flag. What do we think? Can we ship it? I filed a bug about something else that seems to be related to that this morning that taking the flag off would fix. So, so we're not ready to ship it yet because we need to do the mobile stuff first. But but um, Rayhan is working on that. It should be Monday or so. Oh wait. So what does that mean, Ricky? Doing what mobile stuff? Well, we ne we we neglected mobile with these changes and um. I don't know if you read the bug. Eva said what to do. Yeah. Is that a? Do you think that that's a good solution, Ricky? Yeah, I mean, it's what I was thinking. What I wasn't sure about is how to go back to the parent topic. But if we just add the arrow, that's good. I think. Yeah. Oh, that in addition to the back button already in the browser. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because you didn't necessarily. Well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we do it on desktop. There's a back button on the desktop, but we're gonna put a back navigation item. That's that's fine. I get it. Um, but that means that subtopics are broken for the moment on mobile, also. Yeah, subtopics are broken because the URLs changed for them, and we didn't fix those templates. Okay. So. Uh, so we're gonna. We're going to add the mobile stuff, and then is that going to be behind a flag, or are we going to add it and remove the flag? Well, it's going to be behind the same flag, and then hopefully we can turn it all on um, Monday or Tuesday. Okay. I have a question, Ricky. Why, why are things that are supposed to be behind a flag in front of a flag, like uh, the mobile problem? Because the thing is that the views changed, um, and it affected. I guess it affected my mistake. It affected the other, both cases. It was a, yeah, the problem there. Okay. Okay. Um, and then my catch all, what else needs to be done with the IA to be ready for Firefox OS? Do we have to get localizers to localize strings? Do we, I, I heard those new topic icons were maybe in progress. Do we need a way to localize the knock alerts? Did we just lose Kadir? No, actually, I'm, I'm here. Again. Oh, it's just me then. Well, okay. Okay. No, I'm here. So for the localized strings, I uh, put a message on uh, on our forum so that people know that this is urgent because we hadn't updated uh, strings for a while. Uh, this is especially important for the topic uh, strings, which are new for Firefox OS. So they're, So people can localize them right now? They can localize them, and I've uh, informed them uh, specifically about this and asked them to give this a priority. Okay. Because it's happening so soon now. Are we talking about localizing the new topics or, or the? Or what? Yeah. Uh, we did. That wasn't the last update of the strings, right, Ricky? So I have. Yeah, unless unless um, we've made more changes on to our data. Well, I don't, actually, I don't know. Uh, Does anyone know if? You know, uh, it, or someone. Yeah. I haven't changed anything. Well, I know okay. that I have 
So that is that again? That doesn't mean things haven't changed. Does anyone know if Michelle changed uh, the topics for Firefox OS since Monday? That was the uh, day when we updated the strings. I don't think so. I mean, I don't know, but I haven't noticed anything change. Yeah. The yeah, high level ones so, don't seem to be different. Yeah. I haven't noticed any changes this week. Last week, I think okay. things changed. Then we will just assume that um, we, they have the strings, uh, and they will yeah. tell us if they don't have <laughs> the localizers are vocal about that. New topic icons? Actually, I don't know anything about that. Um, I haven't oh, finished Eby, you might know, right? Re yeah, Rehan is working on them. Oh, Rehan's making icons? That, yeah. He told me that he, can, he could do that. OK. And knock alerts. Knock alerts are in the current sprint. So, are they localizable? I'm not sure, but or do we have I don't a? Think so. That moved out. I mean, I, there's a request for information from Patrick there. Uh, does that on? You moved it out of the. Wait, that moved out of the current sprint. Yeah, I moved it out because we don't have information on what we have to do there. I asked for all the cases, all the messages we need, and he and nobody's replied. System well, from IT doesn't support localizing the, the status messages, so we need to figure out a bigger issue. Yeah, uh, and I, I talked to Patrick about it, and he, he was the one saying that, yeah, and he's on vacation now, so we're pretty much screwed. Oh, is he on vacation? Until when? For a week, next week. Next week? Yeah. So I so she I said, chose the perfect time. <laughs> did you see that email yeah. about Sendesk? My credentials don't work, and and yeah, he answered. So he's 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 online today, but he's not online tomorrow. So or uh, tomorrow next week. Well, Let me pick can not choose that. So who so, do we so need information wait, who, from? Where, where are we? Patrick. Exactly. So yeah. Do you have the link to the bug, Handy? I don't. I don't have it either. Uh, just let me. I found it. Uh, could you link to it, Eby? Uh, I posted it on Sumo, on Sumo. Okay. Thank you. Wait, but this is the localization part. Yeah, well, are we are talking, we talking about, about that? Yeah, knock alerts yeah. are, are they're, implemented. they're implemented, right? They're just yeah. not localizable? Yeah. Oh, I saw we were talking about the automatic. So we have we have a manual implementation, right? Say that again, Kadir. So we have a manual implementation of uh, knock alerts, right? So they inform us and we put that online. That's the that's all we have, right? Yeah, you have to go yes. into the announcement step and put a message here. Okay. I thought we were talking about the automation of that. All right, never mind that. But I mean, the idea is that we have to automate it. That's the solution, right? The real yeah. solution. Yeah. Yes, I thought we were talking about that, but apparently we didn't. So let's talk about localization. <laughs> right, like manual would work for now, but then the other problem is then they'll just be in English and. Can we can we localize them uh, on an as need so, basis, or is there just no mechanism to show them in different languages and different locales right now? 
Uh, right so now, site-wide messages are just English. Oh, I mean, it's whatever you type in. Mm. So, I mean, we could do that, right, Ricky? We do the same thing with uh, topic names that we uh, print that out and give it, uh, put it on verbatim. We could do it. Mm, I don't know. It wouldn't be ideal. I mean, I don't know. Then we would have to have all the possible messages. Like I said, we need to figure out what all the messages are first, right? Otherwise, we can't localize anything. Right. Um, Cause so we we need a, fi a finite set of it can't be like any random message. How do you translate that? <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, you could probably have placeholders or like I don't even know if you want, do you want to hours or something. Anyway, you could have placeholders. You could say like um, variable service is currently not available. We are working on it. A generic message like that, and then. Okay, Patrick is, is uh, Patrick gonna, could... gonna Patrick is gonna join in just a second. So maybe okay. Patrick could fill in the blank part like sync is currently not available. We are working on it. Right. Please come back later. I don't know if I mean it's it's not the ideal solution. It could be that sync is localized differently in different languages. And maybe you can yeah, I don't know. We are not going to be specific, right? We are only going to say like sync is not working, something like that, and come back later or something. We are not going to give them a detail of why it's not working. And yeah, am I correct or is it? That was. I don't my even know what the plan is. If that is the case, then we have a limited number of services for which this could be the case. So when when they are fairly gener generic, you can have those messages on hold and then just put them in there when we need them. But of course, if it's more, if we want to give them a why or something like that, then probably not. There's Patrick. Hello. Hey, Patrick. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, this is the first time I'm looking at myself this morning. So. Um, so sure. the localization, that's what you guys are discussing, yes. huh? Yes, exactly. So I, I've already um, put down templates for the unscheduled outages uh, for Marketplace and Persona, uh, and I can work on the rest of the, uh, the ones for scheduled outages uh, today and get those all into the bug. Is that where you guys want them? I guess that's perfect, right, Ricky? If you need set of uh, strings that we can then put on verbatim and have them localized. Yeah, I mean, but but we. I mean, we do, need you, to implement this. do you do you want just actual strings for downtime severity things like that, or what? What I'd like to have is just you know a, a full message. Um, that's that we can localize and just replace, you know, for a particular issue, we can plug in severity and the amount of time that it's going to be down into a bigger message. So, uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if, if the IT system is going to give us that data like that. So like, cause all their messages are all super, are they're all like written by hand mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if you worked with them on on their requirements, but they told me that they work with with Corey and with Melissa, who I don't know who that is, mm -hmm. driving their requirements. Do you know who Melissa is? Yes, I do. Okay. But uh, I mean, they are not writing can... out. Oh, sorry. But but so they they built the system that we need to right, and if they can't give us the data we need, then we're screwed. I mean, or they need to fix their system. And I don't know if, how hard that's going to be. Right. Um. So I I can go back and talk to to Melissa and Corey about what they can actually provide, but can we plug 
So say they can give us Verity and and the be down. Can we plug that into? I, my question is, can we plug that into a bigger message? So, um, for example, the Firefox Marketplace is temporarily available during this downtime. You'll not be able to access the marketplace or update applications. Uh, engineers have been alerted and are investigating issue. We expect services to resume in blank hours. Um, and, you know, so that that's the message that I'd like to post because, you know, that, that, that actually gives a user some context that, as to what's going on rather than just, you know, this, this service is down, it's going to be down this amount of time. Uh, it's I wonder if we should here. just uh, uh, have like a generic map with the severity and link to the status site. Someplace else. Yeah, because they're building the status, right? They're in the status site. Uh, have you seen it? No, I haven't seen so it. So this is what we're going to feed from. Um, are you on an IRC? Yeah. What's what's your... PMCC LARD. Can you put it in pound sumo or no? Oh, or I'm in, okay. or on the I'm in sumo. Yeah. Uh, so basically, this is their, the site, right? And it's going to have an API that gives me all this stuff. And, and then I can... I can filter by open and post a message. How but gifts. <clears throat> are these going to be localizable? Well, these are just. I don't think it's going to be localized. Yet, so doesn't look like it. It's highly specific. Like the message yeah. is a message. You can't like yeah. it in, in all languages. Mm. Both the title and the body of the message are just freeform text. Right. Um, so I can go back and talk to Melissa and Corey about this. Um, it, my problem with the, the way that uh, it's going about being implemented right now is it, it does no good to any of our users who are in these, you know, Firefox OS launch markets, you know. A person in Spain getting this alert isn't going to know what's going on unless they know English. Yes. And for things like, you know, if marketplace is down, that could be a big issue in, in one of these markets. But can I be like, hey, no, there's marketplace issues, um, known market, I don't know, like, if you, if you write a long message, it's not even going to fit on the mobile on the mobile screen. Gotcha. Right. You need like a short message because it's we we don't have a lot of space for the message. Yeah. What uh Patrick? Or do you have yes? We lost oh. you. Oh we lost you for a second. Yeah, you, I heard what and then nothing. Oh okay. Am I am I better now? Yes. Yeah. What kind of character limit do we have for? I mean, there's no limit, but I don't know. Right. I mean, you would have to play with this and see, and we would have to tweak the UI to fit okay. more. Like you can, like we're showing the message at the bottom, and and unless you take over the entire, like it, it's like you know, it's like a little space at the bottom of the screen. Right. For instance, here's the like 404 message. It's two sentences. Okay. Okay. That's how much it takes up of the screen. Okay. What what's going on there? Oh. Although the four oh four message is pretty big. Yeah. You could use yeah. smaller text. Right. But but see that page is dedicated to a four oh four. That these alerts are gonna show, you know, on existing pages right. on a little at the bottom. So you can't like cover the entire page. Right. So like, for instance, also think about, or like, here's another, I guess another, then maybe a better example is like, um, 
this is, you know, Hot Topics takes up half the darn page. There's three of them. Mm -hmm. More than half the page. <clears throat> Michael, can you go to your profile? Then you, we will show you a message on top of the page, actually, like to your profile if you click on uh, the settings thing and then go to your profile. Uh, so, yeah, profile. Uh, I guess I have to sign in. Let's see. Oh, okay. No, never mind then. Yeah, so limited real estate. Who's beeping me? Hey, Tyler. Sorry about that. I wasn't planning on uh, attending the meeting today, so. Uh, um, I can send you the notes where we are, the etherpad. I just put it, uh, sorry, in here, yeah. Um, we so I'm a bit lost, though. Sorry, go ahead, Kadir. So the requirement is that we show people on, the, on this page in a localized uh, version what's wrong with the services that we provide, right? Right. Um, and we just had the idea of showing them a completely generic message and then forwarding them to the status page. But you said that that's not, not going to cut it, right? Just trying to understand where we are. So, I, so I don't think that giving users um, severity and the length of time is enough information. Um, I mean, we can play around with what, I mean, is there also going to be an explanation of what the downtime is? On that linked page, I assume right. it will be completely in English if there is an explanation for what's going on. I'm talking about the message itself on top of the Sumo page. But that's totally up to us because they're not driving it right now. This is a totally manual operation. So whatever we put there is going to be shown there. Right. But but the thing is, like, I wouldn't want to implement something that we can't automate because then, or unless you want to do it manually forever. Or no, I don't want to do it manually forever. Um, I do want to automate it, but I would like to, I would like to give a little bit more information than just severity and. Uh, what's affected. Then it depends on what we are getting from uh, IT. So if, if we right now want to build a system that is um, that we can use when we automate this, mm -hmm. then we depend on IT. So whatever they give us on, um, with regards to information, that's what we can use. And we need to have that information in a machine readable format, not free form text. Otherwise, there's not going to be any way to. No, I understand that. Yeah. So what I'm, I guess what I'm asking is, can we can we take what they provide to us and put it into something that's a little bit more digestible by customers? Can we take what they're giving us and put it into uh, not free form text, but if we come up with a uh, you know, a, a canned message, you know, saying marketplace is down. We're aware of it. We have engineers that are working on it. Here's the amount of time. So if it's generic like that, yeah, I can, I presume what they could give us is the name of the service. Mm -hmm. So we fill in the blank and the time it will be down. So we fill in that blank. That sounds that like works. a good idea to so, me. So so like that's why I wanted like the set of alerts that we need, and then um, we can drive the requirements based on that. Okay. Right. Like Understood. what's what's the ideal message that we what what are the ideal can responses that we want to have or can whatever you call them, um, alerts. Like if we had a blank canvas, how what would these messages be? And then we can go back to them and see what they can do for us. <laughs> right. So I, I already have a template of uh, two of the unscheduled ones. Um, it sounds like they're a little bit too long now right at the moment. So I can go back and uh, pare those down to you know something a little bit uh, smaller that will fit on the mobile screen. Um, I mean, the other, the other option, I mean, for mobile, it could say that 
like known issues and then when you click on it it opens something bigger or something right, right. so there's solutions to we just, okay like we shouldn't yeah we can think about more but yeah i, I guess we'll see what the message is uh, the length is okay so i'll i'll draft those today michael would you would you mind would you mind looking those over and sure yeah i can do that some feedback okay so we need the messages and then we need the answer from IT and whether they can provide us with the data to actually display those messages, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. That's Ricky. Yes. We'd no. have to go back and say, can you give us the whatever we're assuming, like name of service, so, estimated so, downtime. So the campaign does um, services, services affected, right? And then you can see that there. And then it has like... Um, uh the severity so it's either no downtime which i assume we don't want to show those uh, is emergency show um uh, it's, it doesn't have like yeah the thing yeah the thing that about it is it doesn't show what it, like it you know, it says downtime expected or emergency, but it doesn't uh, give you a um, what that amount of downtime is actually going to be. Yeah, like a date, like a range. Yeah. Like, is that something yeah. that they're going to provide or is that something that we want or? Well, we'd have to see if they can provide that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, I mean, that that's something that we're you know, when we're talking about scheduled downtimes, we're talking about the, in the, in the knock meetings, um, we're talking about how long, you know, the, the, the knock team is giving these guys a window of, you know, eight hours or four hours to, to complete this work. So, um, they are at least discussing time. Um, I'm not sure why it's not represented. So we have to ask them if they can give us the, oh, sorry. So we have to ask them if they can give us the time. Right. In a machine, because because like they can give you the time in, in the middle of that big message and it's useless to us. Right. It needs to be in right. a machine readable way. All, all information that we get needs to be machine readable, right? Otherwise we can't uh, parse it. Okay. So we have to ask them about the time. Do we have to, and the rest depends on the messages that that um, patrick is going to put in right what else we need right. from them okay so but that's going to take time uh getting them to provide that information but also for us to set up the system but the release is in uh, a few days so what are we going to do for the release so oh, what, what is the requirement for the release could we do that so the Go release ahead. the Sorry. release was uh for for the release it's it's just posting manually Yes, but right now it's not localized. So what's going to happen for the release? Can we post? Is it a requirement to have that in a local? I guess it is that, that it's yes. also localized. Can we manually okay, localize us, it? But if it's it. not possible to, I mean, it, that, yeah, that, my thought was to, to manually localize it. But if, it's, if there's no ability for us to post uh, a localized version, um, we could just show everybody a message in Spanish. If something happened next week, we're not expecting it, but if something <clears> happened <throat> next week, we could just put up a message in Spanish for everyone. It'd be kind of weird. That's, yeah. yeah, that's extremely weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, like a uh, Chinese yeah. person seeing a Spanish message. It's, so uh, who's going to be putting these messages anyway? I mean, not everybody has access to the, to the admin. Um, I assume it's only going to be happening on business hours. <laughs> yes. So, so in that case, we can we can push like a code push with a message, right, in Spanish, and show that only to Spanish because we can push code whenever, right? But how do we do that with Polish, for example? Which well, but to next week, the next week, 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 yeah. Week, next week is only Spain, and then and then like there's nothing until like August first or something. No, actually, Polish is starting the twelfth. July twelfth. Yeah. Are they going yeah. right after? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that, that, well, then, I mean, if somebody knows Polish, we can do the same thing with them. <laughs> Google Translate. Google Translate. I mean, 
Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I guess at least we have a solution for next week. So if we can do yeah. that, I guess that's a good, good thing to do in the, as a stopgap solution. Buys us a, so, yeah, a little bit of time. But, but we should move on really quickly with this. Um, so Patrick, are you going to be able to talk to IT about this today? Or should we pick this up next week um, and talk to guys? Talk to the guys. Um, Ricky, would you be able to, to talk to Corey next week? Yeah, yeah. So, so as soon as, I mean, if we get the list of what we need, then we can meet with those guys and see. Okay. But, but you, you won't be here next week, right, Patrick? No, I won't. Okay, so we can we we have to drive this, uh, um, or we will uh, pick this up then okay. and move this along. Um, but um, based on the generic messages that yeah. you posted about, I don't even know when they're gonna have this in production, like actually working. Is the knock even ready? Is that this one? Uh, the knock is running now. Uh, they hit. Uh, Taos is getting alerts from all of these services, uh, and they're reporting back to those those teams and engineers. And um, they've been running, you know, test knock alerts. So it it seems like it's in production now. Um, my expectation was that it would be running for the launch of the phones. So. Okay. So what happens, I mean, one more question. Who is getting those messages? Because if you are out next week and something happens during the release, what is going to They're going happen? into the help desk. And, okay, and so is someone there are, covering there, that? Yeah, there are people okay. that are covering the help desk. Tyler is, Chang is, uh, right. Michelle is, uh, and there's actually a document on you know how to post these knock alerts and, yeah. Yeah, I'll be out next week, but Matt and Chang are both watching it closely. So yeah. everyone's out next week. <laughs> it's Fourth of July, man. Fourth of July, yeah. bye. I, I I know. So just uh, so Cel celebrate America. Also, <laughs> FYI, we should. Uh, I guess we are not having this meeting next week since it's Fourth of July, and almost everybody, yeah. half the team, will be off. It's Friday again. Well, oh, I wait, Friday. But a lot of people, and then a lot of people won't be here on Friday either. Um, oh, this, this doesn't look like a good week. Uh, anyway, um, would still be great to have this meeting in a uh, during the release week. So, but it looks like it's gonna be hard next week. What about Wednesday? Maybe um, impromptu. There are a lot of meetings on Wednesday. So what about the developer forms for uh, Zendesk? Um, do those have to be live for launch or what? Or so, against them, right? Uh, so I'd like them live. Um, currently, they're in the in the documents. It just uh, provides an email address, the support at mozilla.com, which gets routed into the help desk. Um, so users and developers have a way to get in to contact the help desk if they have one of those issues. Uh, the form collects a little bit more information uh, that we that were uh, that's needed to diagnose the problem. Um, so there there is a there is a workaround in place until those forms are available. Okay, so the only hard requirement that we have for the release week is to get uh, Spanish messages to display to Spanish Firefox OS users. And we can do that with code pushes. We can do, uh, is, is that a feature that, I guess that is a feature that we have to implement. Do you wanna put that on the sprint? What's the feature? Displaying Spanish messages to Spanish Firefox OS users oh. uh, with a code push. But is, that is a stopgap solution, like, like because we are launching on the. But we don't need to do anything to that, right? It's not a bug, right? Do, 
Do we have that feature? Well, if we're pushing code, then we're pushing code whenever it happens, right? So you create the feature oh. if the problem happens. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, mean, I mean, we have the CSS and everything ready. We just need to put a, a hard coded okay. message. Well, if that if that if the design of that is already uh, if that's already done, then of course, yeah, yeah. I think it is. Are we going to use the existing design from uh, for reminding people to download the latest version or something? Yeah. So if what? you look, if you, I think if you go to Dev, Dev has a message. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. It says test announcement. <laughs> And if you look at this is if you switch to mobile, you see that it shows at the bottom. Okay. Just out of curiosity, why did we, why did we choose the bottom and not the top of the page for for mobile? I think that we we in general have been showing alerts on the bottom, like for other stuff, okay. like different messages that sh that that show up and fade away have been at the bottom. I don't know, it just follows the convention that was already there. OK. All right, anything else that we need to do for getting uh, for next week? Or is that it? No? OK, then I'll just assume that that's the only hard requirement that we have. All right. Cool. Hey Tyler. Do you want do we want to talk about sorry, Ricky, were you gonna say something? No. Oh. Tyler, you wanna talk about uh answers? So I think uh when did we talk about this? Monday? I was talking about something from that open help conference where um uh they were talking about in question and answer style forums, um, moderators and helpers voting up good answers to help those things rise to the top for people just browsing the, the forums. Um, and Matt said we should talk about it today. Um. Yeah, the one question that I had, would this basically be like a man, because we already have the um, helpful answers where the um, the and the question asker can come in and mark a question as helpful and it shows up at the top of the um, thread. Would this be basically a moderator manually doing that or is this actually going to show up in forum search results? Um, both, right? So what no, if a moderator voted, oh, I guess a moderator no, I get. I don't know what I'm saying. Sorry, let me think this through. Tyler, what do you mean with search results? What, what would show up in search results? Well, what I'm wondering is if, because um, Michael was saying that it would make it easier for people browsing the forums, if like someone was just searching the forums, would we create a feature that showed just helpful answers right in the search? Or would this just basically be an extension of um, what we already have for helpful votes? I'm a little confused as to ex exactly what this is going to entail. So if I understand correctly, this is just about us voting up things like normal users. Okay. Right. Right. That's okay. what. That's the way I understood it. I think. Okay. So or, we, right. Or <laughs> making sure that, like, for instance, when someone has solved something but they've marked the wrong answer as the solved thing, that we that we mark the right thing as solved. Um, uh, but you know, like as that's happening already. That's happening already. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's happening already. So, uh, and moderators are actually pretty good about that. Okay. So, um. th what we are not doing today is uh, display uh, search results, for example, based on helpful votes. Um, there, there is no like you, you don't get the the search result or or the question is not marked uh, shown higher up in the search results, just because there's more helpful votes. Might be useful though, but it's not. I mean, that's not part of the scope as far as I can tell. 
Yeah, I think I think that um, allowing people to upvote answers manually um, would be awesome. I think that we maybe should have make it so that you can't upvote your own answer. I think um, you already can. Okay, then yeah, if we continued that, then I think that would be the one area of abuse I'd be worried about. Um, but I think that'd be awesome. Right. Um, I mean, as someone, the advantage would be to that we will be showing a helpful message. I mean, we are showing helpful messages right below the question. So if we did more of that, we could make the right answer show below the question so that people don't have to scroll. That's the advantage of it. Right. Especially on those three, four page long uh, threads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I a, think it's, that awesome. a... it's a thing as someone answering or looking through the form that I've never done because I've been like, it's not my question, you know, um, but I certainly could. I recognize, oh, that's a good answer. That should have been the one that, you know, it should have at least been helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there is no no drawback on, on doing it. So there is no no risk attached to the fact that we will be doing this. So you know, I was thinking about this before and uh, mentioned that uh, you don't know if this is your question. Like it could be that the answer is a totally different one uh, because you don't have the problem. You don't know what the answer is, like whether reset will actually solve the issue or not. Here's the thing, a lot of people are voting and all, none of them actually have the issue. Right. So people are already voting. Um, so we would just skew this towards expert voting instead of non-experts voting. Yeah. Well, and maybe something we could do if we did roll this out is have like a um, guideline doc, you know, that basically says, you know, it's something way generic uh, of an answer, you know, think twice before you mark it as helpful on, or if it's way too specific and, um, you know, if it involves editing about config prefs, but you're not sure if that's actually the issue, you know, re think twice before you make it the helpful answer. You know, if someone's not come back and said that that's the exact issue. Um, just kind of some general guidelines to think along. Um, I think we should be careful, but on the other hand, like, we would follow those guidelines, but everyone else on the web, like, anyone can just come in and vote and on stuff. stuff. Right. And they're doing that. So, but but when it, if, if a moderator comes and upvotes um an answer wouldn't that be taking higher precedence than other helpful votes i don't think it does not right now it could i mean but we don't have that feature it, right well no yeah, isn't I that think... what we're proposing though no to have like this was just a social thing like instead of as a thing to do in addition to like answering questions in the forum also looking for looking as you're looking through questions that have already been answered oh, okay, okay. and saying, Hey, that one is actually a helpful answer and it's not getting recognition and marking as helpful. Okay. 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 I understood this is kind of, um, an alternative to moderators going through and marking questions as solved that they would have a moderator best answer kind of a thing on the thread. So I, I understood this differently. Yep. No, actually, still, that's still not the part same of the thoughts. scope, but yeah, but but I mean that that's uh, an interesting thought because in a lot of in a lot of cases where we have uh, a number of votes, like even if you have just twenty votes, just us going through those questions and voting other things up won't make much of a difference. Yep. Um, so in, in a lot of cases, our votes won't have won't won't change much. So it might be helpful to actually give give moderator votes uh, more of a weight. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking because yeah, a lot of threads are going to have a lot of votes, and unless you had every moderator on the forum go to that thread and say, you know, this one is helpful, um, it may not make a difference um, if there's something on it that's above I, that. So I think that we shouldn't try to to skew that that much initially. We should, we should start goes. promoting moderators, yeah, moderators to, to start voting, and then after that we, we, can, we can think about it. So what are we shooting for? What's, the, what's our success metric here?
Good question. <laughs> I mean, the the um, I guess the initial idea, and maybe our form works differently than the you know. I mean, it obviously works differently than like a Stack Exchange forum, but um, but the idea was to to just help good answers or helpful answers uh, be surfaced. Um, by going out and actually looking for them. How do we tell whether that's happening or not? What, maybe manually? Maybe we, we do a manual test or something? I don't know. Yeah, I don't I mean, know. I could be totally off and, and maybe it already is happening. I just, when I said it in the meeting the other day, everybody was like, oh yeah, I never do. People kind of said that they never do that. Mm -hmm. Now, what I mean is, uh, I mean, it would be good to know whether we are having an effect, right? So then we can tell whether we should actually skew uh, moderator votes or, or not. So maybe, I, I guess one way to do this, or maybe just one suggestion would be to maybe look at the top, I don't know, uh, 100 questions that we uh, got uh, per week and then see if if they have helpful votes uh, like if, if the helpful thing helpful post is actually marked as the most helpful one see it this week and then once we start doing this do this again next week and the week after that and see if anything is changing yeah I guess yeah but we would have we would need a pretty high uh, well, actually, we know our our uh, population is pretty low. So yeah, with a hundred votes, let me see. Now I'm looking at the forum. So we have about uh, what is it? A thousand uh, questions per per week, right? Oh, less, right? About five hundred or something. Uh, no, it's like a hundred a day. So a little bit more than a hundred a day. So yeah. Okay, yeah, let's say a thousand, just to be honest. Okay, and if you wanted to have a confidence interval of like, I don't know, like 5%. Oh, wait, oh, that's still 300 questions to go through. No, 10%. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think that the, the whole point here is that it's a benefit. There's, it's probably not a... Uh, uh, a big one, but it's, it's not going to hurt to do it. And then we can figure out if uh, we can value more admin votes than non-admin votes. And, and just that's a different uh, analysis, I will say. Yeah, I agree with you that this would probably be beneficial. But on the other hand, like, how do we decide whether we should do something more? Basically, if we we are not having so the, the the whole story here is that we need we need a mechanism to evaluate how many people get help period on their on their on their visit to Sumo. Once we have that, we can we can evaluate all these things. Until we have that, it's pretty much impossible. I mean, we, we could we could say yes, this answer was helpful. Uh, helpful reply at votes, but I, I don't see, I don't think that a lot of people is gonna vote uh, an answer that is already helpful. What do you mean? I, I, I part? I didn't understand that people wouldn't vote on an answer that already has votes. Yeah, so if, if an answer is already helpful, how many people is, is voting that answer as helpful again? I just looked at one that had 17 votes on it. I don't know. So maybe, maybe we can see that, how many extra additional helpful votes we get. Oh, so you mean the way to measure this would be so we vote things up and then if other people also vote them up, 
then that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. But, but then again, uh, when we vote them up, we give them more visibility, so they will naturally get more votes because they are now shown right below the uh, question. So they will always get more votes. I feel like this is a good idea, but it's really hard to measure whether it's going to have any effect or not and whether it's making a difference or not. So yeah. it could, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So in the end, this could, I mean, on, on one hand, it, it could be beneficial, but on the other hand, it could also complicate, make things more complicated for us and without knowing whether this is actually uh, providing us with an overall improvement. Because now we have yeah. to like you have to tell moderators please vote things up, and then you have there is also a social aspect of this where people are voting things up, and then you have uh, discussions about like are we voting the right things up or not? Now you have to create uh, guidelines for it, and then I've, you have I've, to you have those discussions about guidelines. And, and I mean it's totally worth it, uh, or, or it's totally okay if you know that yeah it's providing a benefit, but if it's not providing a benefit then. It's a lot of it's extra a, work. It's a lot of complication for nothing. I mean, I don't think that it's, again, this is the same story with the moderators uh, adding tags or removing tags and stuff like that. If you see a helpful answer that is obviously helpful, just go ahead and vote it. But just don't spend too much time going through threads that are already open and you're not participating into marking things. I think that that's, that's what we want to encourage here. Yeah. Super because simple. it's going to be, I mean, it, yeah. I don't think that there's a, a straightforward way of measuring how more helpful that, I mean, we could measure how more helpful uh, a thread with a helpful uh, answer is than and one that it hasn't that, but it's, I think that we, we have other, other, other areas where we can get way more value from our time and the time of the developers right now. So I agree with Kadir, just let, I don't think that we should overthink this right now. And just let, let's give them, yes, if you want to vote things up, go ahead and do it. But let's, let's not overthink about uh, overthink this this topic okay and not make it a task for people to go right. out and do exactly Just if you're already there and you see something helpful go ahead and vote on it but that's my take and it could be completely wrong so I mean, then we are doing away with the, with the idea of uh, giving moderate moderators more weight for their um, votes. I mean, we we could technically give the most way to the original poster and then the moderators and then the signed users and then unsigned users, but that suddenly complicates the whole logic and the Yeah, yeah, because at because that point, I would really like to know if we are adding a benefit exactly. or not. And the value is like, I don't think that it's huge. Yeah, it maybe some value, but it's gonna be like, yeah. You could go into all those kinds of things like a Stack Exchange thing has. I just don't think we get enough questions to make it worth it, where people vote like, this is a good question, you know, this is a good answer, um, well, and those things show it's, it's, up higher. It's, it's, I mean, it's not only so. Stack Exchange also has uh, a, a lot of forums that actually have uh, a lower um, rate of questions than we do have. But also, there um, the the structure of of uh, users is different. And those who vote on that those sites are actually also kind of experts. Um, so they have something like, for example, knitting. There is a Stack Exchange for knitting, but those who vote there, even though it's it's uh, not that not uh, as, as many as for for the programming parts, they're still experts, and we don't. 
don't have that. So people who vote on our sites, users who have an issue, who are on our forums because they have an issue, not because they know anything about Firefox, but because they have an issue with Firefox. Right. Which is different than someone who has a programming issue, because then you know something about uh, the programming language. That's why you're on, uh, uh, on the Stack Exchange side. Um, so I think it's just a different kind of uh, user than we have, and just doesn't lend itself to, to the same kind of voting. Yeah. I mean, I, I just bring it up only because I had, I had heard about this. I have no, doesn't matter to me much how, how we do it. I was just thought it was an interesting idea. And that, and uh... so anyway, I, I don't think, uh, like I said, I don't, um, I don't think there is a harm in letting people know that they can vote on stuff that is interesting, or that that sounds good. Right. Yeah. And and maybe some moderators are doing that already because there is no restriction on it, so maybe they're doing that already. Right. Okay. Well, we somehow used the whole hour. Yeah. Four topics. <laughs> <laughs> really on two. Uh, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we have readiness for Firefox OS, and that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So unless there's anything else, we should probably call it a meeting. Yeah. Last chance. We'll... Kadir okay, needs to go out. Yes, Kadir, it's dinner time. I would definitely prefer that. Yes, I would appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Thanks, okay, bye. Take bye. Take care, guys.